The following program is presented by Pro Sound and Video. Hello and welcome to Broward T News. We're from West Broward and we're here to give you the latest and greatest news from young journalists all around the county and the country. Stay tuned to learn about how a small motel on the West Coast handles the struggles that come with the business of residing in a busy city. How a high school junior takes matters into her own hands by creating an Instagram to promote small businesses. How a local sushi chef brings culture into his community. How a local artist shares her passion for alcohol ink art. And much more on this edition of Broward Teen News. News. And welcome to Broward Teen News, West Broward Edition. I'm Emma Luna. And I'm Nicholas Gallen. Today, we're going to be looking inside our community to see some of the amazing things happening here in South Florida. The Pink Marketplace is an Instagram account that was created to empower newly formed women-owned businesses. Emma Kopp is a high school junior who, along with her co-founders, plans to inspire women to create their own businesses, as well as to help close the gender wage gap. Nicholas Gallen can tell you more. Starting up and founding a business isn't as simple as it sounds, especially at a young age. Emma Kopp, however, instead has established her very own platform called Pink Dot Marketplace in order to help promote the other small businesses created by women of all ages in her area. I actually started this account to promote women-owned businesses because it was a midterm project in my women's studies class. Um, my teacher, Ms. Shermans, wanted us to find a way to shed light um, on how to solve gender inequality. So I chose women in business because women tend to be underrepresented and underpaid in this industry. And I always see on social media, women CEOs getting a lot of hate and people saying that they probably just got a hand into them, that they don't deserve it. And I wanted to do something to try to fix this stereotype to show that women can own businesses too, no matter how small or big. Creating her platform in order to help spread the word of numerous local female-run businesses, she also pushes her platform out by publishing information on her personal account, printing out flyers, and so much more. So to encourage my followers to buy from these shops, I post the owner's best work on my account with their permission and basically talk about what services they provide or what items they create. And I've actually also created informational flyers and I post about it on my personal account and I actually just started doing giveaways, which is where we partner with one of the women that we've already posted about and give away free items to our followers. Although Emma has managed to find many different customers over the past months, hardships are still prominent. Um, a big obstacle that I face while running this account is honestly lack of communication. Um, so many accounts that I reach out to don't actually answer because they think we're just some random fake account, just like trolling on the internet. Um, and this can be difficult to keep our account running when we message like 20 accounts a week and none of them respond. And surprisingly, I have received some hate for doing this, um, the majority from men. And I'm not going to lie, it's kind of hard to shield all that out. And I think that anyone that's received hate online knows that it can sometimes take a mental toll on you. But ultimately, I have to remember that I'm doing this to help out a lot of women. And in this case, the positives far away the negatives. Promoting other businesses while canceling out all the negativity with loathing from men and having to handle people not taking her seriously, Emma still manages to continue furthering her platform to help the development of all professions run by women in her area. For WBTV, this has been Nicholas Gallen reporting. Music is a very powerful tool, helping many people find hope in different situations. Fingerprints is a record store in Long Beach, California that helps their customers find music and makes them feel a little more at home. Jackson can tell us more. Whether it be problems with school, work, or mental health issues, it goes without saying that everyone deals with daily setbacks. With so many vices, it only makes sense that people would gravitate towards various coping mechanisms. Fingerprints Music is on a mission to set the trend of a healthy lifestyle through the application of music. I've definitely felt proud showing people new things, especially for modern bands, and they're not necessarily like 30 years old or something, but they're in the last five years because there's a lot of good new music out there. You just kind of need help finding it sometimes. Music's potential to bring people out of despair should not be overlooked, and Fingerprints recognizes this in full. Their strong passion for music, along with their extensive catalog of artists, has allowed customers to feel truly at home. I definitely find hope in hard times through music. There have been some times where I get lifted out of a bad place, um, especially during some family drama, I feel like, or like 
lack of love or something like that, it does kind of lift you out. It makes you feel like there's something ahead, some better times ahead for sure. Fingerprints Music holds one of the largest archives of music in all of Long Beach, California. But to the people who frequent it, it's a comfortable area where they can find ways to express their emotions and find the hope that everything is going to be all right. For STN, this has been Jackson Gay reporting. With the high travel season around the corner, hotels have been getting busier and busier every day. The Belmont Shore Inn is ready to stand up and compete against the big franchise hotels around Long Beach, California with a smile on their face. With high season traveling about to begin, hotels have been getting busier even during the pandemic. With things settling back into place, the Belmont Shore Inc. in Long Beach is ready to take on that challenge. My name is Navin Bhai M. Patel and my position of this property is the manager. This is a very small uh, boutique inn. So we do not uh, provide uh, breakfast and, and subtle service or whatever, but the rest of the all, we try to give a good service. In fact, the inn has made roughly $600,000 renovations to its 15 units to give it a more modern look, despite the unfortunate challenges they had when COVID struck the area. That's why business is a little bit so slow. It's that uh, sanitizing the room. 99.99% people happy with our service. Nonetheless, the Belmont Shore Inn continues to get back on track to grow and improve. For STN, this has been Matthew Millian reporting. Artisan goods are hard to find. Now, we'll learn about a local baker who strives to bring her amazing artisanship, baked goods, and coffee to the community with her bakery in Pembroke Pines. Giancarlo can tell us more. The Lady Baker is a bakery in Pembroke Gardens that features a menu of delicious artisanal breads that's changed every week. It was started by Paolo Marsola's vision of a place where people in Weston could get access to a variety of quality breads. I am so happy uh, to bring good things to the community because we don't have a good bakery around here. We don't have good croissants, good breads, good coffee. Every time I put a new item on the menu, I, I want them all to try it. I said, oh my God, I'm offering this to the community. So for me, it's amazing to be part of this. I have customers that come every day for the cappuccino, every single day. I have customers that come every single day to have a croissant. And we know their name, they know us. And when they come in, we call by the name. So they feel that this is their home and that's the idea. So this is something in the community that they know where we are, what we do. We know them, that's the idea, to have this feeling of uh, being part of something. The business was born out of a passion to create something meaningful and bring the community together. To do this, Marcela quit her job and ventured into the culinary world to bring the Lady Baker to life. I used to work on a finance department of a chemical business. Even though it was easy for me to work with numbers, I didn't have my heart into it. I didn't have the passion. And I decided that whenever I was going to work again, I had to work with something that I love. Back in Brazil, when you think about bakers, you only think about men. Only men baking breads and carrying things. And I said, no, this is from a lady. <laughs> with its many delicacies and charming history behind it, the Lady Baker continues to be an important place where workers come for their daily breads and students sit to do their work in peace. For WBTV, this has been John Carlos Average reporting. Long Beach, California homes some of the best coffee roasters in the U.S. Rose Park is one of these local coffee shops run by a small group of caring people who are constantly finding new ways to better their service. Our very own Nicholas Gowan can spill the beans. Rose Parks is a small local coffee shop that works in unique ways to bring a smile to their customers' faces as well as set them apart from all of the local businesses nearby. I think we're a lot more friendly than everywhere else. We're, we try to make you feel like you're cared for when you walk in here and that starts from even before you walk in here. That starts from like our roasting, um, which happens locally and it's done with a lot of care. Creating a caring atmosphere for all of their customers, they make sure that they can provide the friendliest experience for everyone as soon as they walk through the door. When we make the drinks, when we interact with our customers, we just want to make sure that you feel like you're cared for and you're getting a good experience. And pretty much no matter what, we just want to make sure that everybody leaves here happy. That's, that's kind of it. <laughs> 
never lacking interest while also working and interacting with their customers in a way that brings everyone inside comfort is what isolates Rose Parks from all of the local cafes and jobs in their area. For STN, this has been Nicholas Gallen reporting. Still to come on Bauerty News, we find out how Village Cleaners, a local dry cleaning business, maintains its business through many hardships. We'll see you after the break. I try and live by a standard of, uh, you know, leave more on this planet than you take. My daily interaction with people, I know how hard it is out there, and I feel very lucky and grateful that I get to come to a job. I have a roof over my head, food in my belly. So I try and bring, you know, that light and that joy to people I meet out on the street as well. Because a lot of people, you know, they don't have it so easy. People fall on hard times. So I like to bring some light in it and some levity and some laughter too. Alex Figueroa owns one of the many dry cleaning businesses here in South Florida. Despite overcoming many hardships, he's committed to providing good service and staying loyal to his customers. Giancarlo can give us a scoop. Alex Figueroa is the owner of Village Cleaners, a dry cleaner in Fort Lauderdale that serves many clients every day. Figueroa owned another dry cleaner place before his time at Village Cleaners and recalls the struggle of going from nothing to owning this successful small business. Well, the first cleaners I started in, in 2003. Um, that one I started because a close friend of mine was in the business and then I wanted to start my own business so that's when I jumped into and I opened my own cleaners. Um, uh, it's difficult at the beginning it's difficult of course because everything when it's new this was brand new so there was nothing here the hardest part is at the beginning of course because you have no customers so at the beginning you have to um, bring people in and then the people that actually come in you have to keep them so at the beginning is that's the hard part just after that you know people continue to come weekly and stuff so but the hardest thing is at the beginning getting people in your business and then keeping them. Pushing past all the hardships and difficulties, Figaro has kept village cleaners alive and well. He now celebrates the perks of owning this business. Oh, being my own boss, man. It's the best part. Nobody tells you what to do. So that part I enjoy. That's basically why I like owning my own business. Though he's faced a lot to get his dry cleaners to a stable position, Figaro has remained triumphant as he comes in every day to work at the thriving village cleaners. For WBTV, this has been Giancarlo Zayat Report. Here at BTN, we have the pleasure of working with other schools in the area to find out what's going on here in South Florida. Here's a story from CCNN's Tommy Pozo on how Nerio Amaya of Wet Dream Sushi combines two cultures to bring amazing sushi rolls to South Florida. Here in Coconut Grove, sellers across the world are coming together to bring little slices, or should I say rolls of culture, to this South Florida neighborhood. Meet Nario, a sushi vendor with a unique twist. I use the technique of sushi um, as a, in, in respect to Asiatic culture, specifically Japanese. Uh, but a lot of the flavors I put in the sushi are a mixture between uh, my own roots and uh, the Japanese culture that I'm very familiar with. And Nario's product has attracted people from all over the world. The place where we came from in Australia is a little small surfing town called Byron Bay, but there's not a lot of diversity there. so. There's a lot of diversity in Miami. I basically buy my week's fruit and vegetables here and we like to grab breakfast. And the people he surrounds himself with understand the impact his culinary fusion has made. Well, I think it's important to really show how diverse you know, food and anything can really be. I mean, you would come in here, you would think someone who's making sushi has to be of some type of Asian descent, but it shows just how far someone can work to really be a part of that culture and really learn, you know, I mean, he's been doing this for so many years and it just shows that like, you know, if you're really passionate about something, you could pretty much do anything. Every single tent that you see here is a person of a dream. Every single person here is, comes out and, and they're trying to make something of themselves in their own hands. I feel like it's really admirable uh, that so many people come out here. As the sushi rolls out and the day comes to a close, people like Nerio and his plant-based sushi will continue to make visitors feel like they have a piece of the globe right here in their own home. For CCNN Live, I'm Tommy Pozo, reporting. Victim blaming is one of the most prominent problems women face in our country today. Chloe can tell us how victim blaming can impact women, even in settings like school. 
Victim blaming is one of the most normalized action in predatory behavior. Claiming that a girl's attire was the reason behind her assault and that the actual perpetrator at hand isn't at fault, because it's simply natural for a body to pounce when shown skin. But this exact logic also takes place in school dress code rules. Throughout a girl's upbringing, they are constantly told to be careful what they wear, because either they might send the wrong message or the wrong person will find them. Told by the Washington Post, a federal commission on the crime of violence study found that just 4.4% of all reported rape incidents involved provocative behavior on part of the victim. In murder cases, it's 22%. Instead of teaching boys consent and a sense of control, schools spend their time teaching girls ways to avoid it, making girls feel as if it's a woman's issue to be harassed and not the aggressor's. Of course, kids need to be going to school wearing a form of coverage, but the need to cover even your shoulders, because apparently shoulders are provocative, is absolutely unnecessary. What schools need to do is enforce lessons and real consequences to boys to get rid of the mentality, boys will be boys. Because all dress codes accomplish is to set in stone in a girl's mind that it's her fault if a man attacks her. If the intent of dress code is to protect against unwanted advances, we are sending the wrong message. The message we are sending, too often specifically to women, is that you can cause someone to assault you or prevent someone from assaulting you based on how you dress. The idea that women have to cover up to protect themselves is not only false from a factual standpoint, but de-victimizing to women who just want to express themselves in their style. This has been Chloe Martin for WBTV. Burgerlicious is an event held by the Coral Gables Chamber of Commerce that strives to bring in all the best burgers and flavors in South Florida to one place. CCNN's Manny Nakarado can tell us more. In its 10th year of celebration, Burgerlicious has been bringing together the best burgers in Miami right here in Coral Gables. Well, listen, tonight what we're doing is we're celebrating the 10th annual Burgerlicious. This is an event put on by the Coral Gables Chamber, and it's a great opportunity to celebrate some of the best restaurants in our city and also to introduce people who maybe have never come down to the city of Coral Gables, who have never tasted some of our 100, over 150 restaurants here in the city. But more importantly, it's all about community, quality of life, and families. That's why when you look around, you see so many young people, so many families enjoying this wonderful night in the city beautiful. And none of this would have been possible without the help of the Coral Gables Chamber of Commerce. One of our roles as a chamber, in addition to being great advocates for our businesses, is to help celebrate and promote those that do great things in our community, starting with our restaurants and, of course, the burgers on their menu. Yeah, listen, anytime you get the community of restaurants together, all side by side, we're all working together, we're, we're trading stuff, we're, we're borrowing things from each other. We get to meet each other, it's a, it's a community. We walk over here, nothing like being in your backyard. Like, I feel like I'm cooking out in my backyard, flipping burgers but for my neighbors. I know this, that when restaurants come back year after year as part of Burgerlicious, it's really about the fact that they've had an incredible experience and they've seen the benefits, they've seen it pay dividends. Folks who come to Burgerlicious and eat a small slider want to go back and experience the full menu and an incredible burger at the restaurant. And I think if we can do that, starting now and continuing into the future, then we have achieved our goals. As Burgerlicious ends for tonight, local residents will go home with a taste of some of the best burgers in Miami. For CCN Live, I'm Manny Nakarado, reporting. No problem. That's what made me hungry. Denise Wallace is a local artist that has an amazing passion for her alcohol ink artwork and strives to share her artwork across South Florida. She'll tell us all about her amazing artwork in this next segment. I am an alcohol ink artist. So I use alcohol ink. It's almost like a watercolor, but for a non-porous surface. And everything that I do is painted with alcohol ink. I've been doing artwork my whole life and doing craft festivals my whole life. I got into the alcohol ink probably about five or six years ago and it just went nuts. And I went nuts with it because I love it and people love it and it just looks beautiful. I do like different layers on them. So like the, like the say like the more blue in here so that I do that first. Then I, you know, I, I may do 10 or 20 at a time and then let, when I get them all done and they're dry, then I go back and I do all the detail work. 
now that COVID is not so bad anymore and people are out and about, the festivals are now happening again, this will keep me busy all year round. I do have um, some of my vases in some local stores, so I keep, you know, keep them, keep their inventory going. Um, I work from my home, I have a stu art studio in my home, and it all gets done there. Oh, it just comes from my heart. It's, I paint it with love. When you can do something that you love, it's not work. Next on Broward City News, we'll learn about how a thrift store in Long Beach, California serves the local community. This and many more after a quick break. I should have done this away. Assistance League is one of the many hidden gems in the city of Long Beach, California. They gather volunteers to help give back to children and adults in the community. Store manager Tammy Klein gives us her story in the next segment. So the Assistance League of Long Beach Thrift and Vintage Shop um, is a major fundraiser for Assistance League of Long Beach, which is a nonprofit. We work a lot with Long Beach Unified School District to provide extra services for them, like school uniforms, um, low-cost brace programs, and we have nine other programs. One of them is also a literacy program. We have over a hundred volunteers who come in and work the shop on an average once once to four times a month. So we really get to know our customers. Sometimes we're carrying things to their car or helping dress them for a special occasion. Um, you know, sometimes they're sending baby clothes to family members. Without people coming through our door, we wouldn't be able to do what we do in supporting Assistance League of Long Beach. Our ability and my ability to be able to serve them with a smile, maybe I'm the only person who smiled at them that day. And if I can make them smile and they can make someone else smile, then our whole community is better. Gabriel Stunna Verona is a former fighter that has fought many opponents. Although he has experience fighting, he wasn't prepared for the fight against the noise ordinances the city has in place. CCNN's Massimo El Rio can tell us more. Gabriel Stunna Verona has been fighting his whole life. I've had some very hard physical fights in the cage professionally, and none of them amounted to this. As a former professional fighter, he just succeeded in what he calls the fight of his life. This fight at Stun is Fit, his gym in South Miami. But this fight wasn't the kind he's used to. We were here, everything was beautiful, everything was lovely. Um, city was amazing with us. His neighbors disagreed. They started complaining to city officials and wanted Stunna out. Two years after the initial complaint started, they changed the noise ordinance. Once they did that, then they were able to hit us with all the citations that they wanted to. Neighbors complained the music was too loud. They said they could hear from their homes right behind this fence, which, as you can see, is directly behind the gym. Once they changed the noise on us, of course, then we were illegal every which way because they did it for that. So for the last two years, they've cited me over 80 times, over $50,000 in fines. All this over noise. Those who work out at Stunna's noticed and quickly joined the fight. Everybody in the gym really kind of stood behind him and banded with him. I mean, one of the nights they had a town hall, city hall meeting right around the corner. And I remember I did my training session with my trainer and then I changed my shirt into a non-sweaty one and we walked over there together and literally packed the room. This fight was worth it. For him, it was a success. They did a settlement deal and they pretty much got to leave us alone, let us do our business as, we, as usual. Tapping out of this fight was never an option. It was a couple of days that were very stressful and very frustrating. And you know, behind closed doors, I fought it, but no, nah, giving up was never gonna be the option. The settlement he reached with the city of South Miami brings things back to how they were here when this fight first started. The noise ordinance back to how it was, and the fines disappeared. For CCNN Live, I'm Massimo Del Rio reporting. 
Well, that wraps it up from here. From West Broward High, I'm Emma Luna. And I'm Nicholas Gallen. If you want to see other stories like these and more, make sure to follow the Broward Teen News Facebook page. See you next time for the next edition of Broward Teen News. Broward Teen News was brought to you by ProSound and Video.